Hello, everyone, and welcome into the fourth episode of Jack's Mailbag, the series where I answer your Gamecock baseball questions. If you have a question you'd like answered on next week's episode, be sure to leave it in the comments section below on this video, or I'll have a post on the GamecockCentral.com insiders form where you can go ahead and leave your questions below by commenting on that thread that I post. Anyway, uh, we got a busy weekend ahead with South Carolina taking on Belmont in a three-game series. The Gamecocks are 5-0 and on the year and off to a really good start and got some good questions for this week. So without further ado, let's get our first question in from Phlebas Jones, who asks, did you see Ty Good pitch? If so, what did you think of his pitching style, strengths, and weaknesses? Thanks. So, yeah, I've seen Ty pitch twice now, and he's looked really good. I mean, he has pitched out of the bullpen. I thought at the beginning of the, you know, in the preseason coming into it, I thought he was really going to be competing for maybe a weekend rotation spot or maybe a midweek rotation, uh, you know, midweek starter spot. And, uh, you know, obviously that hasn't been the case. I thought based that, that was going to happen based off his track record as a starter at Charleston. Uh, but he's pitched out of the bullpen, and he's kind of had to come in and be like a Houdini, kind of pitching in jams and getting out of it. I think on uh, on Tuesday against Winthrop, Austin Williams, I believe it was, got into a really big jam and gave up a few runs uh, after Eddie Copper was on the mound starting. And Good just came in, got a fly ball to right field. Ethan Petrie caught it uh, with a runner on third. Uh, he threw it to Gavin Cassis, or Gavin Cassis, and uh, Cassis threw it to uh, a guy trailing too far off a second base for an inning-ending double play, and then good go back, good go back goes back out for another inning and gets uh, gets the job done. So he's continued to pitch really well, and I kind of expect him to be in this role where he can go two, three innings uh, during the weekend. Mark Kingston's been super high on him, and. I think uh, we'll, we'll continue to see this version of Ty Good that pitches uh, really strong for this team. And that's an asset uh, that goes really far. So our next question comes from 1M Creek Cock. He asks, hey, Jack, any surprises from a season opening series or did things go as expected? I think it was surprising to see just how good the pitching staff was. Obviously, you have your outliers in there. Uh, where you get some guys that struggled a little bit. But I, I don't think it was as bad as expected. I think overall, look, let's put it this way. When you throw a combined no-hitter in your first series of the season, you're doing something right. I think the – let's start with the with the starting rotation, right? Eli Jones on Friday, uh, last Friday I should say, pitched superb, right? He had the first inning where he struggled a little bit, gave up a run. But then after that, he's able to really shut down Miami's offense and get the win, and he pitched beautifully. And then Saturday with Dylan Eskew, uh, right? He's a guy that didn't start at all last year. He was a sparingly used pitcher out of the bullpen. And with him, the issue wasn't the early going, the walks, right? He had a few walks in the early going, and only had, and he threw 48 pitches through two innings. So you're thinking, oh, well, I mean, he's pitching all right, but how long is he going to go? He ends up going five innings, which I thought was really good. He ended up throwing 80 pitches, and he looked really solid on the mound. And I think if you can kind of work through the kinks of less walks, more strikes in those early innings, he's a guy that can definitely go six, maybe seven innings this weekend. We'll see what happens. Uh, he's slated to pitch on Saturday. And then, obviously, Sunday, Roman Kimball. If you guys still haven't checked out my story on uh, Roman I'll uh, I'll plug it in the uh, in the comments below on this uh, on this YouTube video, but I wrote a long form story about Roman and his journey back uh, to you know playing baseball after having Tommy John, and it's a uh, it's a fascinating story. I uh, got to talk with his parents and uh, talk to Roman himself about just you know baseball, YouTube, the journey back, and everything. But anyway, not to get a little sidetracked, just wanted to shamelessly plug for a second, but. Um, he pitched, you know, for two innings on Sunday. He pitched, I think, if I had to give him a grade, I'd say it was like a B plus, right? He didn't give up a run or anything. Uh, he had three walks, but he also had five strikeouts. And the thing with Tommy John is, in your first outing back, it's not so much about, you know, how many strikes you're throwing or whatever. It's literally just about coming back, right? Command is one of the last things I think you're concerned about. You're just getting your feet wet getting back into pitching in a real game atmosphere. Cause you got to think about it. 
he has been working his tail off to get back for so long now, and he has been in scrimmages and having uh, flat grounds, bullpen sessions, you name it. But there's nothing like a real game atmosphere where you're pitching against a guys that aren't on your team, right? It's 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 completely different. So for him to go out there and get five strikeouts, I thought his stuff was fairly nasty. His uh, his breaking pitches, I think, are looking good, and it's all going to develop over time, right? He didn't. He only went two innings. Didn't throw a ton of pitches. I expect him to maybe go. Maybe I think at best we could see him maybe go four innings this week. Um, it's all give and take depending on how he pitches. Again, if it's if his pitch if his pitch count is getting up there, then you have to look at it that way. Of okay, we can't let this guy go way too long because you don't want to overuse him and maybe possibly reaggravate something. You never know what can happen. So, uh, but overall, I thought he did well. And then the bullpen, obviously, when you throw a combined no hitter, I think that says a lot. I think we talked about Ty Good earlier. I think he pitched very well this weekend. Uh, you know, Chris Veach. He pitched really well on uh, last Friday in the season opener. And look, I think you're going to need guys to go out there and get outs for you this season. I think this is a pitching staff with a lot to prove, a lot of a lot of unproven guys. And so far, I think they're pitching very well. So I'm very uh, I'm very impressed with what I've seen so far. Next question comes from Cocky Eleven, and they ask, "Would you be surprised to see Cassis get benched before conference play?" Struggled last year against better competition and seems cause he could take that spot in the field. Would open DH for a few guys until somebody shows they deserve it. All right, so I'll say this. Don't lose hope on Gavin Cassis just yet, right? I, I get it. It He's struggling, right? He's not hitting very high right now, and it's uh, it hasn't been a good start to the year. However, it's only five games, guys. It's only five games. He has, you know, at this point – He's proven to be a very good hitter. I've sa- I said it last week multiple times. The fact that he is the eight-hole hitter on this team really says a lot about just how good this offense is, right? Because, look, he – last year, right, he was middle of the order, that three, four, five hole last year he was hitting in primarily, and he was mashing balls. And, look, I think as the weather heats up and as the season gets going – He'll really step it up, and I, I think a lot of guys can kind of do the same because he's not the only one struggling right now, right? I mean, going into yesterday, Ethan Petri wasn't hitting that hot, right? He had those two home runs last Saturday, and then he hit the home run on Wednesday, and it, his batting average has been kind of low too. And you know, a lot of a lot of guys are kind of in that early opening weekend, you know, first few weeks kind of struggling. Now, if it's like this in a few weeks where it's SEC plays around the corner and Gavin's still hitting like a, 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 a buck a buck 50 maybe or something. Let's just say like that. Um, then, then I think you look at making changes, right? And I think you have enough guys in this offense to go ahead and make those changes. Luckily, you have a guy like Tyler Causey who can definitely slide in there and play first base. Um, he's been DHing right now. But uh, that said, if you slide Causey over to first, give Gavin a few days or something just to you know regroup and get his mind right and all that, if he's struggling down the road, you have guys that can go in there and DH. You have Kennedy Jones, Ryan Bakes, a lot of options on this offense. And that is the one thing about this group is that they've got a lot of depth all around. I think pitching, they've got depth. And I think offense specifically, they've got enough guys to make it like a revolving door that you need to. Obviously, I think you want a consistent lineup. And I think Gavin gives you the best chance to win. But at the same time, if he's struggling, you do have the ability to go in there and platoon a little bit. And see what happens. But right now, I'd say don't lose hope on him yet. It's only a few games into the year. All it takes is one swing, right? All it takes is one swing. And uh, we'll see what happens. Next question comes from Net Ghost, And they ask, Jack, notice that our catchers were not flashing signs for pitches to be thrown with some pitchers. Saw Cole Messina look at his wrist, but never flashing a pitch sign. And pitchers were not wearing that wrist communicator. How does catcher and pitcher know what to throw? I'm thinking ESP. I'll be honest. I haven't noticed this stuff yet. And <clears throat> I'll say that's because I, you know, I've been at games in person, right? Um, I'm not watching these games on TV uh, like you guys and some of the fans are, where you guys can definitely, you know, track the stuff. You know, I'm where I'm sitting in the press box, I'm seeing, you know, I see the whole field. I 
you know, I can't see the the center field camera angle that some of y'all can. So um, I'll go back and watch this stuff and kind of, uh, you know, pick up on what you're putting down with this question a little bit more. Um, but I, I think the thing that you have to think about is, um, you know, they're hand, so over the last few years, I'm sure if you guys have watched baseball long enough now, you're well aware that sign stealing is a big thing in not just college baseball, but um, any level of baseball. We've seen it with the Houston Astros, you know, bang, bang, that sort of thing. Um, sign stealing is a lot more common nowadays, and teams have to work around ways to prevent that. Like, think for instance, if a guy's on second base, you know, in scoring position, uh, you can easily kind of see – what hand signals the catcher's putting down, you know, whether it's this, that, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I think you're able to kind of interpret it that way. That, that at least to my knowledge, is how teams have kind of gotten away um, with stealing signs. Obviously, some teams like the Astros and whatnot and the Red Sox have kind of been a little more, you know, technological savvy with these sign stealing scandals and all that. But to that, I say uh, the fact that they're not wearing a risk communicator, um, you know, not every team does that, but I think one thing we also have to think about is, you know, <clears throat> there is the possibility that, you know, I don't know if it's like this at the college level. I, I we haven't talked about it or anything, um, but maybe they have like a like a pitch comp thing in their hat, you know, like the pros do, where the the pitchers have, uh, you know, a device on the inside of their their ball caps where they can, uh, you know, it gives you the the, the sign to, on what pitch to throw, and also. It might come down to just, you know, the catcher looking over at Kingston um, and getting the signals that way. <clears throat> and I think South Carolina is also smart about, you know, hiding those signals from their opponents to not give them a leg up. But it is something interesting to think about, right? And whatever they're doing, it seems to be working. And our final question comes from USC61 who asks, who is our backup shortstop? And who hasn't played much yet that you may think uh, pushes for playing time? So right off the bat, Lee Ellis, the backup shortstop, to Will Tippett. Ellis has played a little bit, gotten in a few pinch hitting scenarios, uh, played some late innings and garbage time. But overall, he hasn't played much, and Tippett's the guy right now. As for who I think can really earn some playing time moving forward, it's got to be Ryan Bakes. I think he's continued to – be a guy that, in my opinion, I thought at the beginning of the year, I thought he was going to start on opening day and maybe in the outfield or DH because obviously he's not starting a catcher with Cole Messina back there. But, um, you know, right now with the at-bats he's getting, the opportunities he's getting, he's thriving. You know, he started against Queens on Wednesday, went through four, had three RBIs and a double. He continues to break. And he was doing that in the fall, the, the spring scrimmages and all that. He's a guy that if Cole Messina weren't around, Bakes would obviously be starting. But because of the case he's in, it's just he's getting at bats when he can. And I think at some point, push is going to have to come to shove. And if he continues to hit the way he is, he's going to get in the starting lineup one way or the other, right? Because here's the thing. If one guy's struggling, let's say Gavin Cassis is struggling, for example. Ryan Bakes hitting well, slides right in. It's... It's not that hard, you know. When a guy's hitting really well, you leave him in and let them go. But that is going to do it for this week's episode of Jack's Mailbag. Again, if you have a question you want answered on next week's episode, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below on this video or wait on my post on the GamecockCentral.com Insiders Forum early next week where I will be posting on there. Again, South Carolina is, at, is playing Belmont this weekend at home. If you're at the ballpark and you want to say hi, please come up to me. I'm always available to talk. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much.